Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Digital Marketing Trends You Can't Ignore in 2024. My name is Alexandra Pontikis, and I'm part of the marketing team here at Stack Adapt. I'd like to hand it over to the presenters to get us started. Um, Chris and Jason, off to you. Off to you. Over to you. Thank you, Alex. So, yes, I'm Chris Wilson. I'm an account manager here in the client services team. I've been at Stack Adapt since February last year. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Tanzi. I work on the sales enablement team here at Stack Adapt and I've been here since June 2022. So kicking off and looking at our agenda for today, so we're going to look at advertising trends for 2024. We're going to focus in on some of the key channels to watch. We'll look at what's trending in audience targeting. We'll look at some of the top programmatic measurement solutions out there and then finally we'll wrap up and have our q a okay so looking then and starting off with advertising trends for 2024 so next year global ad spend is forecast to rise over eight percent and it'll reach one trillion dollars next year uh europe is, is expected to see a slightly slower ad spend growth of around 3.6 percent there are a few reasons for this but mainly sort of some of the tougher global economic conditions have been felt in europe so it's been it's been a big factor in that. Uh, the UK's ad market, that's going to grow by a further 4% in 2024, up to a value of £37.1 billion. And the recent higher than expected fall in inflation will hopefully continue. And with that, we'll, have a con we'll see a confidence build into 2024 when the ad market is expected to return to growth. And interestingly, next year, social media is going to soak up over a fifth of total ad spend, so slightly over $227 billion. And Meta alone, so your Facebook, your Instagram, that alone controls almost two thirds of the social media ad market. And then TikTok parent company ByteDance, that's the next biggest social media player with an estimated, estimated $39.6 billion ad revenue income in 2024. However, worth calling out that that is three and a half times smaller than, than Meta. And then looking at uh, ad spend by industry in the UK. So retail will spend £1.89 billion more on digital ads this year than the next largest industry, which is CPG or consumer packaged goods. FinServe is going to be the fastest growing sector in terms of ad spend in 2024. It's projected to grow by 11.5%. Technology and electronics and pharma and health with 11.3% and 11% uh, respectively, they're not far behind either. And one thing to call out here is that digital ad spending across our targeting travelers in the UK is finally going to reach pre-pandemic levels. So great to see that recovery continuing to happen. And then looking at the channels with the strongest growth. So not going to call all of these out. A lot of them will probably be familiar to a lot of people on the call. And But I think interestingly, some of the newer channels like in-game, connected TV and digital out of home, like they're going to be the ones that we see with the highest projected growth next year. And we'll chat a little bit about them later on in the, in the conversation. And then what will marketers be focusing on? What are they going to be looking at, uh, at in the year ahead? So Retention and reactivation, that's going to be a big thing. So in uncertain economic times, brands should really be focusing on maintaining existing relationships and, and re-engaging any customers that have drifted away. And 77% of consumers who have left a brand they were previously loyal to say that they can be won back. First party data activation is going to be big. So marketers out there are prioritizing first party data within their, their strategies due to stricter privacy regulations, the decline of the third party cookie and increasing customer trust and privacy concerns. And then finally, AI powered marketing. So marketers are going to be increasingly relying on AI powered technologies to help them analyze the vast amounts of data they've access to, help them sort of figure out what actionable insights there are and to automate repetitive tasks as well. So this all helps enable more efficient and effective campaign management. And looking then at marketing budgets, so paid media leads in budget allocation across the major marketing resources, so 25.6% of overall 
2023 budget, and that's followed by Martech with 25.4%, Labour 24.6%, and agencies with just over 23%. So just give you a second there to kind of see the investment increase, increasing divestment in those in those different channels. Now looking then at the AI effect on the marketing industry. So uh, interestingly, 73% of marketing executives has said that their companies use Gen AI. So Gen AI or generative artificial intelligence is it's essentially it's an AI capable of generating texts, images, or other media using generative models. So both Gen AI and your more regular AI, they both use machine learning algorithms to obtain the results. However, they do have different goals and purposes. So generative AI is intended to create new content while AI goes much, much broader and deeper. So essentially to wherever the algorithm coder wants to, wants to take it to. And then looking at the effect this will have is, you know, so it's gonna be a massive economic impact. So in marketing and customer relations alone, it should boost annual global output by at least 400 billion. Uh, all the big tech they're establishing their own ai ecosystem so you know microsoft have invested heavily in open ai which obviously uh, owns chat gpt amazon oracle google as well they recently just as of within the last couple of weeks they've invested a further two billion dollars in anthropic which is an open ai competitor and then in terms of in the work environment so the 45.1 million at work users in 2023 represents 58% of Gen AI users, and that's projected to climb to 70.6% in 2025. And then finally, G Gen AI in in search. So I mentioned there with Google and and Microsoft's investments in various AI companies. So they're sort of racing to transform their own search experiences by introducing Gen AI into their own search engines. And we mentioned social media a little bit earlier on. So looking at the, the shifts there. So at this year, four out of five of the major platforms in the UK saw a decline in monthly online usage with some experiencing reduction of up to 48, uh, 48 minutes. So there's different things at play here. So Snapchat's My, My AI feature, that's under the Microsoft microscope by UK regulators uh, as it's deemed to be pose a risk to children's privacy. Uh, TikTok takes the lead on daily time spent with an average of 58 minutes. And as well as that, like 36% of users admit they'd rather visit websites with editorial content, including national, local news and lifestyle sites. And the UK has 57 million social media users who spend an average one hour, 56 minutes each day on social platforms. And interestingly, again, adults in the UK who engage with social media, it, they, it, it's been found that they tend to spend as much on social media as they do on video streaming platforms. So for example, as of May in 2023, UK TikTok users spent 58 minutes per day with the social network, while Netflix users in the country also spent the same amount of time using the video streaming service daily. And TikTok users, they're spending more than 27 hours per month on the platform, and Instagram is seeing only seven hours and 42 minutes per month. And as mentioned earlier, all the other four major platforms experienced a decrease in time spent on their platforms per month. Okay, so looking at streaming advertising, and that's becoming fast becoming the new norm. So the over the top or OTT cost per 1000 impression rates, they're trending downward and they're narrowing across your top streaming services like your, your Netflixes and Disney Pluses, et cetera. Uh, Amazon Prime, they're poised to introduce adverts to UK streaming, to their UK streaming platform in 2024. So people will be given the option to pay for a new ad free subscription and costs are yet to be confirmed, but expected to be announced at a later date. And the, the CPMs, they're normalizing because Netflix and Disney Plus, they aren't really getting the rates they sought when they rolled out their ad supported tiers in, in late 2022. And then retail media. So becoming again, fast becoming buzzword and a major topic in the space. So retail media is projected to rise to over 10% this year and 10.5% next year to a total of 112 billion pounds. So 
that represents 13.6% of all ad spend. And Amazon alone, that's the destination for almost two fifths. So just over 37% of all ad spend in retail media. And looking at a survey carried out that two thirds of respondents believe that retail media will increase in priority over the, the next two years. 49% believe that it will somewhat increase and 17% believe that it will strongly increase. Uh, taking a look now at the, the deprecation of third party cookies. I know this has been a big topic for many years now and you've probably heard about it a lot, uh, but it does genuinely look like 2024 is the year that major strides occur in this space. So in the first quarter of 2024, Google is planning to deprecate third party cookies for 1% of Chrome users and essentially uh, testing deprecation in early parts of the year and then shifting to fully cookie-less solutions by the, by the end of next year. So essentially this will require far more sophisticated and planned approach for marketers. Uh, using cookie-less solutions will become paramount by the end of next year to summarize that one essentially. I'll give you a second just to, to read the stats on screen. Moving on now to consumer trends. So uh, essentially how marketers can respond to this, uh, re-evaluating pricing, getting a competitive edge through audience insights, and then redefining the concept of treats. So European consumers are seeking lower prices and delaying purchases at this, as their spending power decreases. Uh, a stat is two in five declared to be spending less compared to 2022. Uh, so similar to the approach towards cookie solutions, markers would need to be uh, aligned with potential downturn in spending power by being more strategic to minimize any wastage. Uh, detailed audience and analysis mid and post campaign will become more vital than ever. Categories qualified as treats such as dining out and skincare though, are still seeing a growth, which is a positive. Uh, so Europe is more uh, likely than any other region to reduce spending across almost all uh, tracked categories in the last 12 months. So the greatest cutbacks were seen in clothing and shoes uh, and out of, uh, out of home entertainment uh, with travel also seeing a 33% decrease. Uh, essentially a third of consumers have now switched away from, from favored brands in the last 12 months, citing poor loyalty programs, uh, which we'll touch on a bit throughout this presentation uh, and the online uh, customer experience and data privacy issues are core problems. Moving on now to the era of real-time personalization. Uh, so two key stats here, are nearly half of consumers felt frustration when they received irrelevant content or offers and three quarters of consumers expect companies to understand their unique needs and expectations. So uh, truly personalized messaging is the core of relationship marketing and not just about short-term wins or sales, but focused on delighting customers for the long haul. In order to reduce attrition and continue growth, brands need to deliver personalized messaging that shows empathy and understanding of an individual's likes, interests, history, and preferences while delivering it in moments that matter. This means collecting, understanding, and activating more zero and first party data throughout their entire messaging strategy. So across the board, there have been eye-watering year-on-year -year increases in consumers who want more messaging on brand discounts, brand purpose-related activities, loyalty programs that I referenced earlier, VIP offers, personalized treats such as birthday offers, free delivery, which we all love, and sales promotions. Moving on now to uh, UK programmatic growth. Uh, so UK programmatic ad spending growth by channel, unsurprisingly, is dominated by digital out of home, but positively we are still, still expect to see growth in both video and display, which are obviously very established and mature channels. So across uh, campaigns, uh, UK advertisers have worked on in the past 12 to 18 months, on average, nearly a third have included programmatic digital out of home, with that average expected to increase to 39% by 
over the next 18 months. So digital out of home growth is expected as the channel is further adopted by key players in the space, such as VIEW, which is essentially the digital department of uh, JC to Co. And um, programmatic is becoming more readily available to buy more channels than ever before at scale through, through um, channels such as DSPs. Yeah. Moving on now, just to uh, some key takeaways from this section. Uh, so to summarize, AI and personalization will ref revolutionize marketing. Retail media, retail media takes center stage and private, uh, privacy driven advertising strategies are in ascendancy. And as we just touched on, UK will see a significant programmatic growth in 2024. And now we'll move on to channels to watch for next year. So we mentioned earlier about Connected TV as one of the channels we're seeing one of the biggest growth spurts in and nearly three quarters of the UK population will consume digital video this year. So it actually places the UK behind only the US uh, who the viewership is 76.5% and that proportion of viewers is it's going to approach 80% by 2026. And as economic conditions continue to bite, UK consumers will seek more ad supported options. And about, th about two thirds of the UK population watches digital video on a connected TV. And there's going to be du double digit growth in digital video ad spend for the next few years. It already accounts for more than half of total UK display ad spend. So 56% this year, and that's projected to rise to 60.5% in 2026. Next one then is digital out of home. So digital, it's going to account for over 64% of out of home UK ad spending in 2023, and it's expected to surpass the one billion pounds mark in 2026. So the programmatic digital out of home market, it actually doubled in size last year after a long recovery from the pandemic. So it's again, another key indicator that hopefully we're, we're getting back to, to pre-pandemic levels. And looking then at gaming, so in game, which was the channel expected to grow grow the most. So the yeah, the UK in game advertising revenue is expected to surpass six hundred million pounds in twenty twenty four. So being the fourth largest revenue generator locally, and on average, just looking at the impact of of in game, like on average, in game ads they drive forty nine percent prompted recall with a high of 97%. And then after seeing an in-game ad, six in 10 players are likely to make a purchase. And looking at more the sort of tra more traditional metrics and stats like in-game ads, they can drive 98% view viewability versus Lumen's digital ad norm of 78%. And also they're viewed for an average of 3.1 seconds versus Lumen's digital ad norm of 2.9 seconds. And all of this sort of ties in with the, the better quality gaming titles that are available and further planned expansion within the space. And last sort of note or fact to call out, like 81.2 million hours were spent consuming mobile games weekly just within the UK alone. Okay, and then moving on now to what is trending in audience targeting. Uh, so taking a look at uh, the use of AI and machine learning to improve performance, some, some key things to look at are probabilistic targeting and dynamic creative decisioning. So as mentioned early, earlier, 77% of consumers who have left a brand they were previously very loyal to say they can be won back. Uh, nearly three quarters of UK consumers think loyalty programs should help people live more sustainably. So UK uh, consumers, especially Gen Z, care about sustainability. Uh, almost 30% of UK consumers have left a brand they were previously loyal to, loyal to due to sustainability practices. As then, so this is according to Amasis. Um, now among among 18 to 24 year olds, that figure rises even further to 42%, which isn't particularly surprising. Uh, but beyond even marketing, sustainability is vital to retain and win new customers. So from a digital marketing perspective, there are some, some players such as ad exchanges that are even focusing on sustainable practices. Now tying this in all into personalization, <clears throat> developing strategies to, to customize targeting and messaging through aspects such as 
time of day, the weather, et cetera, will only make the experience more significant to the end users slash target audience. Uh, moving on now to uh, ABM and how it's taking over the B2B landscape. Uh, so essentially what ABM targeting allows you to do uh, is gain uh, audience intelligence to inform targeting. Uh, it allows you to track progress across a buyer's journey, understanding who your interested and engaged accounts are, accounts are so you can prioritize them with your sales team. Uh, quantify your marketing dollars to improve ROAS, which is obviously a major KPI. Um, and measure which B2B companies engage with your ads and spot opportunities to optimize current and future strategies as a result. Now, some, <clears throat> some examples of, of ABM targeting. So in EMEA, there's Lead Forensics, uh, which essentially allows you uh, mapping of companies to their IP addresses to reach employees uh, at those companies. Uh, and then uh, over in the US, you have firmographics targeting through uh, Dun & Bradstreet, uh, which allows uh, targeting on based on job title, sector, company size, and the like. So a few different options and two key important examples for 2024 and beyond. Moving on now, we'll have a look at first party data activation. Uh, so essentially, uh, if you look at acquisition based strategies, that's identifying new customers based on signals from your best customers and using that uh, for some lookalike modeling of existing customer based lists. So uh, we're able to utilize existing customer lists to reach these audience with specific messaging. If you want some, some examples, you can, you can look at a bank. Uh, so you can utilize these lists to, to share messaging or, or our campaigns uh, related to a new account type that is available to them um, uh, as a way to kind of upsell uh, and then for, for sticking to, to banking as an example, we can uh, have a look at lapsed customers and lists of last, lapsed customers to focus on a specific creative message that encourages them to return. So as we touched on a, a couple of times now, uh, these people can, these customers, they can be one back. Now in EMEA, uh, you can utilize partners that have proprietary first party data uh, to leverage uh, or leverage your own CRM customer lists. Uh, for programmatic campaigns, which is really going to be a key focus for 2024. And so from here, we will take a look at top programmatic measurement solutions. Yeah, so the first one to call out here then is foot traffic measurement. So 67% of sales in the UK are expected to be completed offline next year, interestingly. So why would we measure foot traffic? So again, the, the methodology or the method it's used to relate mobile campaign impressions or conversions and actual store visits so if you measure it it's it's a, essentially a means of connecting the digital world with offline behaviors as well as providing the data you need to develop a strategy to actually increase it and improve it over time and i know speaking from a from our perspective we would partner with ad square and life site within within the EMEA region so essentially what you can do is like Providers will map out a list of locations that the advertiser wishes to measure, whether they were visited or not. And then these can be tracked through either pixels or in-house measurement. So all about trying to bridge the gap between online and offline. Next, and then brand lift study. So again, why why would you do it? Well, it, it, it essentially allows you to, to to get a, a quantifiable return on your, your ad spend KPIs. And what this does then it allows you to make changes and improvements or optimizations in mid campaign. And again, which will help improve your overall campaign performance and as an engineer, so you can demonstrate the worth of any upper funnel tactics by analyzing your, your return on ad spend. You can unlock new metrics like brand awareness, ad recall and so on. And also you can retarget and reach new audiences. And there's a couple of probably best practices to, to stick to when running something like brand lift. So if you're to run this, it's potentially good at running, running it to coincide with the launch of a new marketing strategy. And then potentially you could run it again a few months later and you can actually then see the impact of the brand awareness on your, on your target impact audience. And then now looking at the shift from viewability to attention. So, 36% of buy-side ad decision makers plan to focus more in 
attention metrics and one from five of, of observed ad impressions are run on made for advertising websites so these tend to focus on viewability to gain more ad revenue so as, as everyone on the call is probably aware viewability has been big buzzword a big topic and a really important metric over the last number of years within the industry so with attention metrics though this sort of feels like we're going one step further so correctly implemented advertisers can actually measure then how long a person views an ad what actions they took during that period of time and they can figure out then how they felt or thought about it both while it was happening and afterwards as well so again it takes that viewability and brings it to the to the next level and now moving on to our wrap up <laughs> yeah essentially to wrap up you want to partner with a programmatic platform that can handle all the new demands that, that we've gone through a, a platform that can operate uh, across a multi-channel multi-funnel target targeting approach uh, as you want to utilize as many channels as possible to reach your target audience and testing which works best for each individual brand so taking the data led, -led approach for 2024 will be of utmost importance so taking this approach, companies saw a 90% success rate for, for improving ROAS via Stack Adapt, and then 88% agree that Stack Adapt drives better results in this space compared, compared to other DSPs. Uh, moving on finally, just to, to three key points to, to really drive home and summarize everything we've, we've taken you through this evening or this afternoon. Uh, use your data to understand your customers uh, leverage new tactics and diversify your marketing channels. Um, so essentially that takes us through the, the presentation um, that, that we have for you today. And from here, we will move over uh, to our Q&A sections. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask away. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, Jason. Um, so yes, we'll jump into the Q&A portion of the webinar and open open up the floor to any question. And just as a reminder, if you have any questions, just place them in the questions box of the GoToWebinar panel. Um, there, there are several questions coming through already, so just a heads up if we're not able to get to yours today, not to worry, we'll follow up directly with you after the webinar. Um, so, um, Jason and Chris, uh, first question, what strategies are being developed to address the growing concerns over ad viewability, ad fraud, and brand safety? <clears throat> well, that's a good one. Uh, I'll take that one, thanks. Um, so I'll get, look, from, from Stack It Up point of view, uh, a lot of work goes in, into our back end to, to minimize things like, like IBT, invalid traffic, uh, ad fraud, and those kinds of things. So it's uh, something our platform quality and inventory teams are extremely vigilant on. Um, but like, like outside of just Stack Adapt, um, partnering with with the likes of Moat, who, who Stack Adapt also um, does partner with and, and double verify to, to combat any issues uh, to around uh, ad fraud and brand safety um, are just, just two, like a, a few ways that um that could be handled um that a lot of those been, been around for a while um but but yeah it's obviously going to be just as equally if not more important moving forward so yeah those, those are some solutions but um yeah if you want more specifics on that um feel free to, to reach out to your uh stack adapt uh, representatives thanks chris that that's um that's that's really clear and what strategies can advertiser advertisers employ to tackle the issue of ad fatigue and ensure that programmatic ads remain engaging and relevant to users over time? Yeah, I, I can jump and take that one. So I think so it broke up in the middle there, but I think you meant like ad fatigue and just ensuring ads remain relevant and engaging over time. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's, there's a few things you can try there. Um, I, I think certainly engaging a multi-channel approach is good as well so you're targeting your users in different formats so it's not just when they're on their phone or you know on their on their laptop you're, you're targeting them across multiple different channels multiple different multiple different formats there's also like things like best practice you can use i think it's good to use different creatives in rotation so no one really wants to see the same ad over and over and over again so 
again, it's worth changing up your creatives. Whatever really suits your strategy is it once a month, is it once a quarter? And then even within the within the ad itself, I think you've got to be careful in terms of being very, very clear and, and honed in on what exactly your objective is. So if it is so you want to drive brand awareness, again, make sure your ad reflects that. Or if you're looking to drive a purchase or a conversion or some sort of uh, some sort of conversion event again make sure the call to action is clear make sure the your buy now or whatever it is or you know, that messaging is absolutely crystal clear so avoiding clutter and keeping it simple where, where preferable and another thing as well like i think i i read before i think it was on statistic that they mentioned the survey they did i think it was as high as 90 percent of people prefer to re, uh, an element of personalization within your ads. So if feasible, again, looking at more personalized uh, ads to individual users is is a good way of ensuring you're keeping your yourself relevant and keeping it fresh with, with any users. And Thanks, also, I, think we, I think we do have best practices stuff from our Creative Studio team that is that is widely available as well. Yeah, we do. Mm. Um, thanks for this. Um, and, and what are the best practices for, for integrating online and offline data sources to create a comprehensive view of the customer journey um, and, and perhaps enhance targeting precision? Oh, that is a <clears throat> that's a very good question. Um, I think I'll, I'll have to take that one. Thank you. Um, best practices. So I think that kind of ties into a lot um, that we've, we've spoken, we covered in that presentation around around testing and, and trialing as much as possible because uh, every every kind of campaign I've ever been a, been a part of has essentially been a bit of a unicorn. They've all been quite unique. Um, so trying as much as possible with, with the data that you do have. So if you look at, you know, utilizing your own um, web analytics, utilizing the CRM audiences, um, that we spoke about, you know, email lists, all those kinds of things. Um, looking, looking at like point of sale um, targeting, so based on what people are, are purchasing. So that that's an example of like offline. Because I guess with, with programmatic, a lot of targeting is is focused on on online behaviors and stuff. But um, one one key factor of offline um, is that point of sale based on what people have been purchasing and. and reaching people based on the relevance of their of their purchases uh, further offline um, kind of kind of linked in the foot traffic attribution that that Jason took you through earlier um, is based on you know people's locations and and everything like that um, and then kind of having um, channels complementing each other um, instead of necessarily competing I've always I've always um, been a firm believer in so I've worked across all the different digital channels really. Uh, when you're looking like social programmatic search and they should never be competing against each other they should be working together um, as an overall marketing strategy and and seeing uh, and and working towards an overall uplift for everything um, so in saying that like integrating with social platforms through um, utilizing that of like impression um, trackers from a from a social um, platform like meta um, implemented on creatives in a programmatic um, DSP, uh, campaign to to build an audience um, over in a social platform to utilize their sequential messaging not even just within the one channel but across multiple channels can really just enhance your your marketing solution have them complement each other instead of looking at the results compared to one another um, so yeah I hope that that answers the question for you uh, definitely and and uh, finding the striking off the right balance it seems um, and, and I know we talked about channels to watch. Uh, one question is about what, from your point of view, what are the biggest projected channels for next year for 2024? Yeah, I, I can take that one. So yeah, definitely something we we called out in the in the the main body of the of the presentation. But yeah, I think the three. Stood out were blended in game, which is, is projected to see the biggest spend, uh, digital out of home, and connected TV as well. So, they're definitely ones they are newer, more novel channels, I would say. Uh, particularly, we touched on in game and sort of the, the increase of sort of gaming quality titles and 
it is having a real effect on, on that space. And I think some of the, the the stats are really compelling in terms of the high viewability you can get and the the influence over a, a purchase done, etc. So that's that's really big for that. I think digital out of home again correctly implemented. We're seeing a sort of major shift in that in terms of moving more and more towards digital rather than your more traditional out of home. And again, a a well executed campaign with digital out of home is potentially really, really good for uh, for delivering a return. And again, as it's it's newer, more novel, and not sort of every partner out there can provide it, it's it's again, it's a potentially really impactful thing to run within your overall marketing mix. And then yeah, the other one was connected TV. So, we're, so it, what's interesting with connected TV and that whole landscape, it's in the UK and Europe, it's very, very different and more fractured than it is in the in the US and, and North America. But we're seeing sort of more <clears throat> more sort of inventory sprites come available over here. And it's again, you saw sort of the the move to the, the lower CPM rates and the sort of move to more ad free or sorry yeah ad free subs and so on and, and different payment tiers so each of the your big sort of providers like netflix and amazon etc are getting more creative in terms of how they approach things and we're seeing i think i read this week where paramount is now partnering with is it pluto tv and that's going to come to uh, the uk and europe so we're that's i think is is really really big and again it's a very very different way of going about targeting where you're targeting in a individuals within households etc so it's yeah I, I i see that become really really massive in in the next two years cool uh that was the last question just wondering if you have anything to add uh if not uh, that was amazing thank you so much again chris and jason no worries mm -hmm. very well no, thanks for having us well, that concludes today's webinar. Uh, thank you all for attending. We hope you found it both informative and insightful. We'll be sending out a follow-up email with a recording to all registrants. So please don't hesitate to reach out with any other question you may have. So uh, thanks again for joining us, everyone. Uh, thanks, Jason and Chris, and enjoy the rest of your day.